As one of the world's favorite rugby team, All Blacks has a fan experience that is unlike others. All Blacks has recently launched Team All Blacks, an online platform for their fans to engage with them. But today, it is faced with two challenges of monetization and how to get more people on their platform. But we are here today to guide Team All Blacks on the path to success. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team Pavlova. So the New Zealand Rugby actually launched an online fan engagement platform, the Team All Blacks, with a particular focus in order to promote various national teams, especially the All Blacks, its most successful rugby team. And it, this platform allows its registered members to have access to exclusive contents, pre-sale tickets, and various other activities. However, the new came to us today with two clear goals for Team All Blacks. How can it further generate a revenue of 25 million? And how can it grow its um, user base to reach 1 million all by 2020? Thus, considering the first goal, as of current, we see that Team All Black generates no revenue at all, as its members can, uh, can register for absolutely no cost. However, with the increasing amount of users and also increasing operational costs, Team All Black will not be able to sustain in the long run if it continues to generate no revenue. This implies that Team All Black needs to increase its value-added services in order to monetize its platform and ge generate a sustainable revenue stream. And moving on to the second goal of increasing user base, we see that All Blacks actually currently has a very active and large social media following with over 4 million Facebook likes. It also provides several merchandise and branded products for sales with over 1,000 branded SKUs on sale. This implies that Team All Black can actually leverage on its current resources in order to garner more users. Thus, keeping these two aims in mind, we've established a clear goal for Team All Black to create a sustainable platform while capturing the heart of global rugby fans leading us to two key questions. How can they generate a sustainable revenue stream? And how can they further grow their user base? So ladies and gentlemen, let us introduce you, Monetize the Core, and Scope for More. Where in Monetize the Core, we will create a premium subscription scheme on our platform, and in Scope for More, we will integrate our social media and retailers in order to increase registration, allowing us to yield over $26 million in revenue and reaching 1 million users all by 2020. So now, let us take a look at our first strategy of Monetize the Core, where we aim to introduce a premium subscription in order to uh, create a sustainable revenue for Team All Blacks. So now, taking a look at the current situation, we know that you have around 350,000 users, and there's two things to point out. Firstly, they can use it for free, and second, there's only one type of account. And the problem that this creates is segmentation because you have different types of users across your user base. So what we're going to do to tackle this problem is in three stages. First is to segment based on the fan behavior, so from uh, passive fans to really uh, avid and hardcore fans. Secondly, we will monetize the first group, which are the regular or passive fans. And thirdly, we're going to monetize the more avid and willing to pay fans. So without further ado, let us introduce to you to two new types of accounts on the platform of All Blacks and All Blacks Plus. So All Blacks is going to be an account which is a basic version for the more passive users and All Blacks Plus for the more premium users. The benefits are as such. In terms of content, All Blacks Plus will be receiving the exclusive content including behind the scenes as well as no ads, while the basic version with ads. And this is where we're going to monetize from the regular users. Furthermore, in terms of prizes and discounts, All Blacks Plus will have an unlimited array in order to submit their submissions for different types of prizes, while the All Blacks will only have just limited options. In terms of tickets, All Blacks Plus will be able to uh, pre-book tickets beforehand on seats that we allocate, so to make sure that they sit at the best place at the stadium. And lastly, the price difference is only $10 between All Blacks Plus and All Blacks. But this is not enough to justify this $10 charge on the premium. So we refer back to your first initial goal, or the six goals, and we see that you want to create a single view in order to provide personalization. And we aim to respond to this by co-creating content with the premium All Blacks Plus members. And this will be done in three stages. The first, Team All Blacks will be offering a list of activities that will then be voted by All Blacks Plus members. For example, I would like to see my favorite rugby player bungee jump off the Queenstown Harbor Bridge. 
So once they vote it, we will then produce the content as well as publish it for everybody to see. And this gives us two key values. Customer value goes up where it's a value-added service and it justifies a $10 premium. Secondly, the All Blacks Plus also gets an increase in global value where you can apply this model to different types of consumer bases all over the world. Now, Team All Blacks want 1 million people on the platform where they can get many, many players, many, many people from different places with various cultures and backgrounds. But what all these fans have in common is that processes are becoming a fan. We looked at the customer journey and we found that the processes of becoming a fan has four critical stages. First, a person knows the team. They just heard it from someone or watched them on TV. Second, they begin to love the team. That's when they start watching matches on TV and cheering for all backs. Last, after that, they begin to feel a sense of belonging when they start to engage on social media platforms, community, as well as buying merchandises and using them. And finally, the, the person commits to the team. He or she will never miss a match and always watch the team play at the stadiums. We see that All Blacks has already captured those who are in the commitment stage. These people are already members of Team All Blacks platform. Therefore, the most critical customers we should focus on are in the belong stage. And this is how we're going to do it. First, having a look at our social media strategy, we see that out of all the social platforms, Facebook is the most attractive one because it has the highest number of likes, up to 4 million likes. This provides a great opportunity to engage with these likers and convert them to become the, our platform users. And as we can see, what we're going to do is to launch a live stream event. All black team players will be having a practice session with this live stream, we'll be having a small banner at the end of the content saying that the viewers can sign up to be on Team All Blacks now to get a special chance to win an autographed rugby ball. This incentivizes people to sign up right on the spot. Moreover, these team players are also going to give out shout outs to members who have just signed up, giving us a real time interactivity. But this is not enough. In the near future, we see that these customers will be traveling to retailers and purchasing All Blacks merchandises. This is a perfect opportunity to, for us to leverage the retailers to give us more users on All Blacks. Now, as we can see, All Blacks fan will be purchasing the merchandises at the retailers, and retailers can give them the coupon code for free trials of All Blacks Premium for purchases more than $100. This benefits all parties with the fan giving, getting, getting an All Blacks experience the retailer having a value added to sell their product more and more over. Team All Blacks will be gaining more members. With our two strategies on the social media as well as on the retailers, we'll be gaining users from both the domestic and international countries. Now let's see how this translates into financials. With our two strategies, monetize the core and score for more, we believe that New Zealand rugby will achieve two key strategic impacts by 2020. First is revenue from Team All Blacks we reached $26.5 million in 2020. And in the same year, it will have over 1 million registered users, with over the half coming from international countries. Now let's take a look at the revenue. We expect the total revenue from Team All Blacks to be over 20, to increase from $150 million to $250 million within four years, realizing the cater of 14% compared to just 10% of the base case. And in order to implement this, we expect the initial investment to be $100,000, while the recurring expenses from the marketing activities as well as the content production to be around $11 million. And all of this will be funded by cash on hand. With that together, we expect the total surplus in, um, in the last year, 2020, to be $23 million. And as we know that no strategy is perfect, we have conducted risk and mitigation plan based on the severity of risk and policy of occurrence. And as we can see here, the aggressive risk that we may face is the low adoption of the All Blacks Plus. So we may mitigate the risk by researching consumer behavior as well as revising the product options. And lastly, to ensure as most implementation across, five, across four years, we have conducted an implementation timeline. For the first strategies, once has the core, we will start developing and enhancing the platform in the first quarter of 2017. And we will then producing as well as distributing content on, on the platform in the second quarter. And for the second strategy, score for more, we'll start producing the content, um, implement the Lucky Girl campaign, as well as the uh, free coupon codes for the um, free trial in the second quarter. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, what have we done today without you, strategies of monetize the core? Firstly, uh, thank you. Um, it's an intriguing challenge that we do have on how to, I guess, uh, as you're talking here, monetize fans. How did you come to the conclusion that ten dollars a month would be uh, an appropriate fee to charge for Linux Plus? So, regarding the uh, fee itself, we currently benchmark this from different types of uh, online media. For example, Netflix or even YouTube Red, which has just been recently launched. And that goes around 12 uh, US dollars. So what we see is that since it's going to be a premium subscription, and it's also something that used to be free, we have to charge at a lower, uh, lower price in order to lower the barriers of entry. So we want to make that smooth conversion from uh, people getting just free stuff to paying for something. However, we intend to add more value with our uh, co-creations. Can you please just clarify, is your strategy, are you rolling it out within New Zealand or are you doing a global rollout on that? For sure. So this strategy itself will be rolled out um, in a global market. So we're going to tap on uh, everybody and we're going to communicate it to everybody who is currently uh, signed up on our free uh, Team All Blacks platform. We see that both strategies are highly scalable because they are on a digital platform, for, ex for example, and easy, it would be very easy for us to get customers from other countries other than New Zealand as well. Um, have you considered any other uh, marketing opportunities to sign up to the platform beyond social media? So currently, the, uh, the other way to sign up onto the platform itself is through the merchandise itself. So whenever somebody, let's say, just watched the game or is looking at the store and they see an All Blacks merchandise, on the tag, it's going to have a code where it's going to give you a premium or a free trial of the premium version of the account for one month. So that is one of the ways that we intend to uh, garner some of the users from an offline point of view. <coughs> um, I think the future of the All Blacks lies in the growth of the children coming through and, and getting on board. Would you consider doing something different for perhaps, you know, say an eight-year-old that couldn't afford ten dollars a month but wants more than just a standard subscription or maybe tiering pricing a little bit? Of course. So regarding the younger age groups, in the current uh, the basic model itself, we are already offering uh, pretty much all of the content itself, but in a more simple version. And that's why we're not charging them. For the specific group of seven and eight year olds, we can always uh, cater or co-create ideas with uh, <clears throat> the team itself in order to, let's say, appeal more to that uh, particular segment. Key for us when we look at the target of a million plus fans and take off that, is obviously the growth here in New Zealand, uh, the will is really extremely popular. We want to target international banks. Do you consider there any priority markets that we should be looking at as we run to markets? Certainly. Having a look at the number of exit fans in various international scenes, we see that the top three countries include USA, Japan, and the UK. And we see that out of these three countries, the top two that we should prioritize are mainly USA and the UK. Because I, we identified that the Japanese market is a very individualist market with we would require local insights as well as to develop <laughs> content in Japanese to be able to capture these um, fan base. So we see that with our two strategies, we'll be able to capture customers from both the US and UK since all the content will be available in English and they are already available online. Can you clarify and, um, your uh, investment requirements for your strategy, please? Um, sure. Okay, so for the first strategies, monetize the core. So we will basically enhancing the assist, assisting platform. So we will improve it and enable um, the extra feature, the um, account system where people can register and pay the fee and it will be about um, $100,000.
For the rest, the rest of them is re recurring expenses. So for the con content production, this is the cost accumulated for the four, for four years. So the cost for the content, we produce the content on um, a daily basis, and the cost per day on average is about um, $2,000 per day in, in the first years, and we will increase the, the cost by producing more contents in the later year, maybe in the year three and year four. So the cost will be increasing maybe to $3,000 per day on average. And so we also have the marketing costs. So we will do both um, above the line and under the line marketing, as well as the, uh, the lucky draw cost. So the lucky draw cost is basically the cost of the um, merchandise, maybe for example, t-shirt or sport equipment that we will distribute to our fans when they um, participate into lucky draw campaign on our social network. For sure. So regarding the female market itself, we do know that they have a specific need or specific, let's say, uh, target they look for when they're watching rugby. So this all lies in content, pretty much. So in terms of content, what we can always produce, and this has been done before, is to produce content that is a bit more female friendly. And this has been done in a case, uh, a case study of a TV show in Japan, where they're able to localize, let's say, a football player from the European and into a more localized Japanese version. So for example, something that would be more suitable for the females would maybe be <coughs> content that would <coughs> be, let's say, maybe even more related to the All Blacks in terms of the culture or even the fan base. But not too much on the sport itself, maybe that's not their interest. But in terms of the females, of course, we have to look for the needs and then cater to them through the content. And to further cater to the female team, we see that as of current, the All Black may um, team is the greatest uh, is the most successful team. However, looking into the future, we, c we can also in in incorporate the female team in order to increase the content of the female team onto our platform in order to engage the female fans as well. Um, just something about the $10 a month, so probably the key thing that stands out is the priority for tickets. Um, yet if you're appealing internationally, what about people in the country that the All Blacks will never pay, uh, play in? What, what, do you see enough value for ten dollars a month where you're just going to get no ads and other things? Is, is there enough difference for them to still pay the ten dollars versus the dollars in New Zealand? For sure. So just uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So your question is uh, they. It's in Canada. Yeah. And they can't can play there for five years. Yes. Would, would you still think someone would pay ten dollars a month for the benefits versus someone in New Zealand? For sure. So to answer that question, we have to take a look at um, just the, the, the markets itself. So of course, a lot or most of the, the users on the platform is going to be from New Zealand. So of course, we're going to target towards that. But for the Canadian people, we have other activities. For example, the um, exclusive content that we plan to co-create. Now this itself can be uh, submitted by any All Blacks Premium or All Blacks Plus user. So let's say that if I love this player, but let's say I can't watch the match, I could still either vote and say that, okay, you can do this activity, or I can even get discounts on some of the, um, let's say, merchandise that I want to order online. So there's many types of avenues that you can explore that will justify the benefits given to that particular base that is not necessarily in the New Zealand or in New Zealand areas. You identified obviously the four million plus fans that we already have on Facebook and obviously the current registration is about 340,000 for Team All Blacks. From what you saw in the business case, what do you think is, is the major sort of almost like the barrier or, or the reason why people aren't signing up to Team All Blacks? We see that um, you have over 51 million fans across the globe. And one of the critical reasons why they haven't signed up is that they didn't know that the platform exists. So um, what we're going to do is to integrate the social media platform to increase adoption of the application. Another barrier is that they may not see the additional value. That's why we also created the premium account for them to be able to have additional values added to their package. And just to really point out why they're not signing up, I think it's because that there's a lot of content on social media already. Some of the fans think it's enough. But we are actually introducing ways to, for them to view the content on social media and say, hey, if you sign up, there's going to be more benefits waiting for you at the, the, new, new, or the All Blacks platform itself. 
So that's the way that we intend to convert the 4 million social media users into 4 million team all black users. How long before your strategy breaks even? Um, so, in terms of financials, so for, for the two strategies, we'll break even from um, the first years because most of our cost is the content producing. And it's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.